All right, YouTube, so I've not done a video for a while. Uh, last time I was in the process of telling you I'd be restoring my uh, International Harvester Cub to Cadet. You have new decals coming. Um, so this is an update on it. I'll go over a few things for some Cub Cadet owners, if they have some, but there's some of the things that are being redone. I'm not gonna redo the deck till later. The plow's pretty much redone. I do have a decal for it. Um, and here's the motor. I did want to go over points. I unfortunately do not know what I did with my spare set of points I had for this. Your points are pretty straightforward. They're right in here. So you have a two flathead uh, bolts come out. And then in here is your points. This wire connects on the top of your points right about there that is held in by a screw and then on this side is another screw you move that and that moves your points in and out so you want to spin your motor until the points open up all right and then you want to use a feeler gauge <clears throat> and for people that don't necessarily know what a feeler gauge is this is a feeler gauge you pop this open and as I can do this, and then these are all your different gauges. And like you can see there, it says 24 thousandths of an inch and so on and so forth. So you get your feeler gauge, you open the points up to their widest part, and you put your feeler gauge in there. Now these are supposed to be set to 20 thousandths of an inch, so you select a 20 thousandths of an inch. You put it in there until there's a slight resistance. Leave it in there, tighten that up, pull it out, rotate this a couple times, make sure it goes in and out because it rides on a little rod by the cam. That's what triggers your ignition. Do it a few times, put your feeler gauge back in. If it should be good to go. Um, these are your coils. I do have a new one, a brand new capacitor. Always make sure it's grounded. There's exposed metal. Both your points and your condenser go on the negative side of the coil. On the positive side of your coil is where your ignition from your key goes to the positive side of the coil. All right. So this is just a general update on some things. Um, this used to be in pretty rough condition. I do have, like I said, decals coming for it. This is the remainder of the stuff that needs to get painted. The plow bracket, the generator, uh, steering tube. And my deck lever, uh, the transmission somewhere else at my other buddy's garage, we're rebuilding that. So I will just go through general things if you're getting a new tractor of what you need to do to potentially tune it up. Or what I like to do. So this is an inline filter. I also got a new fuel sediment bowl. Um, there's a screen up in here. I'll show you the old one. The old one was extremely crumbed up as you can see there um i mean you can pretty much clean the bowl out that wasn't a big deal the carburetor was extremely gummed up so instead of messing around rebuilding it and cleaning it it really is cheap to buy a new one so this is my new co uh, carburetor that is a uh, kohler 10 horse k uh 241 so I mean, eBay has a bunch of stuff. Uh, there's a guy I save tractors. Um, he has some pretty good stuff. If you're local to Pennsylvania, Lebanon and Lancaster area, there's a guy named Ray. He runs Ray International Harvester Parts. He literally has every single Cup Cadet part you can get. So, um, quick go over the carb. I'll do a video of tuning it. This is your high mixture, high, uh, high mixture screw. That's, uh, this is your low idle mixture screw, and then this is your idle screw. And you can see over here, as that plate comes back, it'll rest on that screw. So that's how you adjust your base idle. Um, I'll go over tuning it pretty much. I believe you turn, I have, I have a Kohler book. I believe if memory serves, you turn them in, and then you don't want to bottom them out really hardcore because they are seated. Uh, screws at the bottom of them and if you mess that seat up it won't it won't seat right obviously so you don't want to like crank them to where 
Hercules is doing it. Um, yeah, you, you put them all the way in and you turn them out uh, two and a half turns or two and a quarter turns. I will do a video on it. I have a Kohler book for Kohler motors. Um, and then you kind of got your baseline setting. You start the tractor at an idle. You mess with your uh, low speed idle screw until the idle goes up, mark it, and then you turn it back until the idle goes down, mark it, and you want to put this in the middle. And it's the same thing for the fast idle screw. That's essentially how that works. So new carburetor, obviously new points over there, new spark plug, um, sediment bowl, uh, inline fuel filter. Uh, I did get a new PTO engage shaft for mine. A um, few of the other things. Uh, this is for your valve breather. I'll show you real quick on the motor where these go. Uh, the guy at I Save Tractors has a pretty good video on Kohler motors. Um, oops, wrong way. So your valve breather is right here. Okay, it's just held on by that one nut. These are the two gaskets for it. Um, when you're tuning up a tractor or a Kohler motor specifically, you can set your valve lash. I know the intake valve is uh, eight thousandths to ten thousandths of an inch, and I believe your uh, exhaust valve seventeen thousandths of an inch. So you take that out and you wait until the valve is pretty much seated, not opened. And uh, there's obviously a little bit of space between the lifter and, uh, and the, the valve spring. And you put your feeler gauge in there, see if it's inspected. If not, there's nuts that you can turn to adjust your valve lash. You need these gaskets. And also on the other plate that's inside here, there is an oil drain back hole. Make sure that hole's facing down. I'll probably do a video of showing you that. This is just an overview and obviously these are all your identification numbers to your cold. Um, so you need these gaskets if you're going to set your valve lash. Obviously, that's my international logo going on there. I save tractor guy. He's on eBay. Very good guy that I've dealt with. I've never had an issue with getting any parts from him or anything like that. I got a head gasket off of uh, I save tractors. So I want to do the head gasket. Again, I'll go over a video on how to resurface the head. There are other videos out there. Um, my drive shaft was bent, so I had to get a new drive shaft and collar. This is a collar that goes on the creeper gear. That's down with the transmission. I'll do a video on that eventually. This is your new drive shaft. Um, these are roll pins. That's for your drive shaft. And this is a brand new throw out bearing for your clutch. And as you can see here, these are clutch discs. Now I will caution you, this is a bigger clutch. They do say that it will work with this setup. I didn't feel comfortable with it. Be careful with who you shop off of eBay. Like I said, I will shout out the iSafe tractor guy. Um, never had an issue with his parts. I cannot remember currently where I got, uh, actually I'm pretty sure I can tell you. The tractor shop um, that's where I dealt with for the clutch parts and I mean that comes with legitimately everything you you need I have the uh, the spring that goes on the drive shaft that's down with the transmission and the teaser spring so the clutch kit comes with the, the draw bearing right here the teaser spring the big spring these roll pins and then this is a clutch I got off of off of the tractor shop if you look this was a stock clutch you can see some of the wear right there um, but if you look they're pretty much the same size and essentially they go on the end of the tractor flywheel over here just to show you that it does does fit like so so that does fit. Um, this plow I got at uh, Ray's International in Lancaster. Again, I will shout him out. Very, very knowledgeable dude. Um, that's where I got uh, the steering shaft from. 
I do not have the wiring harness here. I got a wiring harness off of him, a voltage regulator. I got this plow, plow bracket, uh, starter generator, because there's the old one that shot over there. Uh, I'm trying to think. This is also part of your clutch assembly. Uh, there's so much stuff I got from Ray. He has so many used uh, tractor parts, just deals with Cub Cadet. Again, very knowledgeable guy. So that is pretty much what I'm doing for the tune-up kit. New clutch, like I said, new roll pins. They go in here, and then there's spaces for them here, 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 and here. If you have a creeper, make sure you run to get the correct drive shaft with the creeper gear. And then the last thing I got, this is off of iSave tractors as well is a brand new ignition coil so i will tell you this from what i do know about small gas engines obviously i do work on other things if you watch my youtube channel uh mustangs and whatnot um these Kohler engines are, are pretty straightforward they last forever as long as you do general maintenance um small gas engines are really cheap this was like 20 a little over 20 this was like 38 um this was 10 bucks a lot of the other gaskets i believe these gaskets for the valve breather were four bucks uh the drive shaft was like 40 and the clutch kit was like 50 i think uh the sentiment bowl wasn't that expensive this guy right here and obviously with the clutch kit you get that uh there is a new spark plug wire that comes with the points condenser and spark plug kit i got so what I will say is, if you have a tractor, you don't know much about it, you don't know what life it had, and it's not obviously leaking oil anywhere, replace the head gasket, it's cheap, it's easy. Get yourself a Kohler manual, it'll give you the torque specs and the torque sequencing. You can resurface your head by putting it on a flat surface with not heavy grit sandpaper, like 1000 grit sandpaper, wet it, and just put the head back and forth until you can't get a feeler gauge underneath it. Uh, three, uh, 30 thousandths of an inch, I believe, is uh, what they tell you. There's other videos on there that'll explain it way more in depth. Um, resurface the head, replace the head gasket. Replace the carburetor if the other carb's really gummed up. These are really easy to rebuild too. I, they're not very expensive. Uh, points. Condenser, spark plug, wire, coil, and I mean, that's that's pretty much it. You took care of the fuel delivery system. You took care of the ignition system. You get the fuel sediment bowl and, you know, an inline filter. You keep the fuel clean going into the carburetor, um, and these things should run every time. The clutch, I had it apart. Like I said, I'm doing a full restore, so I got that. I did also get this new steering wheel. Well, it's not new, but that I also got from uh, Ray's International down in Lancaster. Again, I'll vouch for the guy. Great guy. I ended up getting uh, new hardware, new bolts um, for the Cub. And this is essentially where we're at right now. Um, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out so far. Um, I plan to plow and do everything with it. I'm waiting for the... Decal kit, I got that on Gen Sale. They also have decals on eBay and Book Book Market, I believe. So that's pretty much where I went for Cup Cadet parts. Um, and like I said, I got the plow and the lift brackets right there. I got off of uh, Ray's International. So, you know, all I will tell you is when you're doing things, whether it's sanding, painting, gasket cleaning, clean is your best friend. Um, Tape your stuff off. I mean, whoever did this before got overspray on there. Um, do the best you can. I didn't really care about this. Obviously, I got overspray on it. But, uh, yeah. So, clean is your best friend. And uh, these tractors are pretty self-explanatory and easy to work on. And this is essentially all I have left. And uh, I can start throwing it together. So, I'm hoping my next video... Uh, I'll do of it running and I will also do a video on how to set valve lash be a much shorter video tuning the carburetor and uh, Maybe putting the clutch and I'll do like a little bit of a transmission video 
um, on the how-to. I don't really, like I said, I've said this before, I don't do time-lapse videos. Uh, they don't really, I mean, they show you how stuff comes apart, but they don't really explain it. So, like, when I go over the transmission video, I'll explain how I set things. The T10 springs and balls, they can be a little bit of a pain in the butt and see clips or E clips for the uh, axles that slide into the rear differential it can also be a bit of a bugger. So again, I'm here to help you. There's an amount videos for these things. Um, again, I'm from Pennsylvania. So if you're from Pennsylvania and you're central Pennsylvania, Ray's International down in Lancaster, look it up. He has a Facebook account, message him. Dude's very, very knowledgeable. Um, has every single cub cadet you can ever think of. Um, like I said, I dealt with high safe tractors, never had an issue. And I also dealt with the tractor shop, also never had any issues. So all in all, I was uh, very, very happy with everything. So again, I hope this helps. This is what I do for general maintenance for these tractors. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory. I love bringing things back to life. Obviously, the Mustang is something I like to bring them back to life. And I've always had a soft spot for, uh, especially these Cub Cadets. They're so cool. I do plan eventually to get uh, fenders for it because I do, don't, I never like the open wheel look. But, uh, yeah, that's my goal. So, again, I hope this helps someone out. The last thing I will tell you is for the correct paint, this is for Cub Cadet Yellow. You want 7593258. That's for Cub Cadet Yellow. They do sell that on eBay, and if you're local to the Pennsylvania, Myers, uh, Lebanon, Lancaster area, uh, Eblings sells Cub Cadet paint as well. And then for your Cub Cadet white, it is 7593259, and I did also use uh, Gloss Clear Coat. And I used uh, Rust-Oleum Automotive Primer, and for the plow and more of the pitted areas, I used uh, a Rust-Oleum, which I don't believe I have any more of it, um, primer filler to kind of mess with uh, filling the pitted areas more. And then I do have a straight pipe for this right here. This is my exhaust. I'm going to paint that with high temp black. I do have the stock muffler. I don't really care for it. So that's pretty much the only thing that's not going to be original. So again, I hope this video helped. I don't make too many Cub Cadet videos because there are a lot out there. Um, but I figured, like I said, YouTube's helped me. I'm just here to give general information back. If you have any questions, comments, leave them in the comment section. If you like my stuff, you're more than welcome to subscribe. I love this. This is my passion. And I just love sharing my knowledge. So until next time, YouTube, thank you.